Today we will talk about very important theory, which is Thevenin and Barton equivalence. Why do we need both of them? And these two different methods are very important and no final exam without one of those. So you will see one of those in the final exam. What is the story behind Thevenin and Norton? If you have a very complicated circuit, imagine, for example, I have no need to draw that, something like that. Very complicated circuit. And you have here current source, whatever. Something complicated and I would like to solve that problem for finding any any circuit like this one. Then what I would like to do, I would like to deal with this branch. I have an experiment and I'm in the lab and I would like to change, I would like to change this guy, change the value of this guy, change this resistor. I will put 10, I will put 20, 30, up to 1000 in a step of 10. And I would like to repeat solving the problem for calculating the current here in this guy. If you try to solve this problem, only for a specific value of the resistance, you need maybe like 20 minutes, right? If you would like to repeat this guy 100 times, because you are starting from 10 and a step of 10, so if you would like to repeat till you reach 2000 value of the resistance, you are expecting that you will need maybe 100 times 20 minutes. This is for solving only one problem and for finding the current. Why? Because each time I have to write summation of the voltage is equal to zero. Summation of the current is equal to zero or use node voltage. But imagine how many loop and how many node do I have? So is it easy to solve such a problem by changing the value of the resistance many times? Is it easy? The answer is no. So Thevenin said, if you are looking for calculating the current or the voltage across a specific branch or the power, or you are concerned to deal with a specific branch, you can find the equivalent circuit with respect to that branch. Thevenin said, you don't like to know what is inside this but you would like to simplify it. What's your opinion if I change it, this part, by only one resistor and one voltage source? The resistor is connected in series with your resistor that you are changing its value. Is it more easier to solve the problem many times? Yes. At that time, I can say I is equal to V over R total. And one step. It will not take more than one minute to substitute and find the required current. This is what Thevenin did. Thevenin tried to work on that and to try to find the equivalent circuit. And Thevenin said, based on that, he said, any circuit could be simplified to be a voltage source connected in series with the resistance. Again, Thevenin said any circuit could be simplified to a voltage source, which is called V Thevenin, connected in series with a resistance, which is called R Thevenin. And he said this will be Thevenin equivalent. This is what Thevenin said. There is another guy. His name is Norton. Norton said what? He said, Thevenin is not better than me. I will 
tell you another thing. I will tell you about my method, which is depending on current source connected in parallel with the resistance. So Norton, Norton said any circuit could be simplified to be a current source called I Norton connected, which is I N, in parallel with a resistance, which is called R Norton. So this will be Norton equivalent. So Thevenin said any circuit could be simplified to be a voltage source connected in series with the resistance. And because Thevenin said that, and he would like everyone to remember his name, he said this is Thevenin equivalent. And based on that, he called the voltage V Thevenin, VTH, and the resistance R Thevenin, RTH. And Norton said, any circuit could be simplified to be a current source connected in parallel with the resistance. And he would like everyone to remember his name. That's why he said the name of the current source is I Norton, I N, and the name of the resistance which is connected in parallel R N, and he called this guy as Norton equivalent. So right now we know what is Thevenin and what is Norton. Thevenin said you will simplify your circuit to be V and R. And Norton said you will simplify your circuit to be I and R. The problem right now is how to calculate or how to find Thevenin equivalent. How to find Norton equivalent? This is the question that we have to ask ourselves about. Let us see. How to find V7? Imagine we are talking about circuit like this one. For example, let us draw any circuit. And I asked you to play with this branch. This is R. I asked you to find Thevenin equivalent between these two points. So you would like to find V Thevenin and you would like to find R Thevenin. And I asked you to find Norton equivalent. You would like to find I Norton and R Norton. Now, Thevenin said, if you would like to find V Thevenin, what do you need? You need to Remove this guy. What is this guy? The branch that you are looking to find Thevenin across it. I would like to find Thevenin between these two points. He said, put this branch away. You don't need it right now. What do you want? You would like to find V. He said, calculate the open circuit voltage here between this point and this point. So you will calculate the open circuit voltage between these two points. This is what is seven in cells. So what you need, you need to calculate the open circuit voltage between the point A and B, whereas the point A and B are the two points that you are looking to find seven in across. OK. So what is needed for Thevenin? I would like to find Thevenin between this point and this point. So I would like to find V open circuit. Based on this circuit, I can say V open circuit here is equal to this voltage plus or minus the voltage across this guy. So it's very easy. Once you open the branch, you will be able to calculate the open circuit voltage. If you don't know how to calculate the open circuit voltage, this is another story we will talk about it. But right now, how to find V Thevenin? He said, calculate the open circuit between these two points, and this will be V Thevenin. Any question for that? Okay. So, this is what I wrote for you here. And it is in my notes to find V7 in. Remove the branch 
that you are looking to find thevenin across and find the open circuit voltage, then the open circuit voltage is V7. The open circuit voltage will be V7. <clears throat> Norton said what? If you would like to calculate I Norton, what you have to do? You will remove also the branch that you would like to find Norton across. And Norton said, instead of leaving that side open, put a short circuit and calculate I short circuit. And I short circuits will be equal to I Norton. So Norton said, remove the branch that you are looking to find Norton equivalent across, then calculate I short circuit, then I Norton is equal to I short circuit. Now, it's very easy to calculate I Norton, and it's very easy to calculate V7. Any question for V7 and an I Norton? What is left for 7 in equivalent? What am I missing? The resistance and the same for Norton equivalent. So I'm looking to find right now R Norton and R, R7. Norton said R7 is equal to my resistance. So R7 is equal to R Norton. If you would like to find R7 and you know R Norton, you can say R7 is equal to R Norton or vice versa. So if you are being able to calculate one of them dealing with Thevenin or Norton will be very easy because once you found R Norton, you will be able to find R Thevenin. How to find R Thevenin? Let us go back to the circuit. Here, for finding Thevenin, we said we will open that branch and calculate the open circuit voltage. For finding I Norton, he said you will put a short circuit here and you will calculate here I short circuit. And I short circuit will be I Norton. Now, my problem is how to find R7 or R Norton. There are three different methods for calculating R7 or R Norton. The first method, if you know R7 and you know R Norton, you can, if you know uh, V7 and you know I Norton, you can say that R Norton is equal to R7 is equal to V7 over I Norton. The first method is if you would like to calculate R7 or R Norton, and you have already calculated V7 and I Norton, you will say R7 is equal to R Norton is equal to V7 divided by I Norton. If I know V7 and I Norton, this is the first method. Any question for R7 or R Norton? Any question? The second method. The second method is long a little bit. Please put your pen or pencil and pay your attention. I'll post that on private space. Don't worry. But please pay your attention because I would like you to know how to calculate R7 and R Norton by using the second method. The second method is saying what? Imagine I have circuit like this one. And we would like to find thevenin equivalent between these two points. So I would like to find thevenin equivalent between point A and point B. Thevenin said, if you would like to use the second method, the first step is to remove this branch. OK, so I will erase it. And after that, what should I do? 
He said after that, you have to replace the voltage source, which is independent by short circuit, and the current source, which is independent by open circuit. Again, Seven and said, I have to remove all independent sources. So the first step, I open the branch. The second step, remove all independent sources. What do you mean by removing voltage source which is independent, replace it by short circuit? And what about the current source which is independent, replace it by open circuit? So what do I have? I have here voltage source. What should I do with this? I will replace it by short circuit. So what am I going to do? I'm going to erase this guy. And I will draw this guy. What am I going to do with this guy? This guy is what? It's dependent voltage source. Should I do anything with this guy? Hey, they didn't talk about it. So I will not touch it again. He said, remove all independent sources. If you have independent voltage source, replace it by short circuit. If you have independent current source, replace it by open circuit. Then, the next step, try to use voltage source or current source, it doesn't matter. Whichever more easier for you. And connect it where? Connect it across that branch. And this voltage source will inject a specific voltage value. What is the value of the voltage? He said it shows any value. 10, 20, 30, 100, whichever you like. So I will inject a voltage source here. And what, what is the next step? He asked me solve that problem, which is a new problem right now, and to try to calculate the current that's coming from this source. I calculated, and he said, R thevenin is equal to R Norton is equal to V injected divided by I calculated. Again, what did we do? He said, remove the branch. I have already removed it. Remove all independent sources. Removing independent voltage source means replace it by short circuit. Removing independent current source, replace it by open circuit. The third step. Use voltage source or current source to inject a specific value. What is the value of the voltage? Any value you like. One, two, three, five, whatever. And then calculate the current due to this source and then divide the voltage over the current this will be equal to r7 and will be equal to r0 or use a current source what is the value of the current source any value and calculate the corresponding voltage across that current source and divide v calculated over i injected so you can use either voltage source or current source. It doesn't matter. This is the second method. Any question? Yes. Uh, let's say, for example, the dependent voltage source. I will not touch the dependent voltage source or the dependent current source. I'll leave it as it is, and I'll solve the problem with that guy. What he said, he said, I will remove all independent and this is a new problem. I have injected voltage, which is independent. Solve that problem. He didn't talk about the dependent sources. OK. Any question? I'll solve problem, detailed one. But I'm telling you the story first. Yes. I will remove all independent sources, not only one. I will remove all independent sources. Only I'm using one to inject a voltage value or a current value. Any other question? OK, this is what is written here, and I will post that online. Don't worry. So there is no need to write it. 
I said replace any independent voltage source by a short circuit and any independent current source by an open circuit. Then inject a voltage source across the branch that you would like to find a Thevenin or Norton across any value and calculate the corresponding current in that branch. Then R Norton is equal to V injected over I calculated. Or use current source at that time, R is equal to V calculated over I injected. Again, this is the second method. The first method, R7 is equal to V7 over I Norton. The second method is I'm injecting a specific voltage or a specific current. The third method which is based on one condition. If you don't have any dependent source, again, the third method is applied if and only if I don't have dependent source. So imagine we are talking about this circuit. Can we use the third method? The answer is no, because we have dependent. When should I use the third method? If I have only independent sources. Again, the third method is applied only if I have independent sources. I don't have dependent. If I don't have dependent sources, I can apply the third method. The third method is saying what? It is saying remove all independent sources. If you have voltage source which is independent, substitute it by a short circuit. If you have a current source, replace it by an open circuit. Right? Do we have any source after replacing those independent sources? Do we have? No. He said, if you replace that guy, let me show you that here. So I will replace that guy here is that. I will replace that guy by short circuit because it is voltage source. Like that. And he said, try to calculate R equivalent. Because after removing the independent sources, I don't have any source because this one is applied if and only if you don't have dependent sources. He said after that, try to calculate R equivalent between these two points. And R equivalent is equal to R7 is equal to R0. You got what I mean? So I have three different methods. This is what I wrote here for you. This method is valid only and only if there is no dependent sources. After removing the branch that you are looking to find Thevenin or Norton across, replace the independent voltage source by a short circuit and the independent current source by an open circuit and calculate R equivalent between the points that you would like to find Thevenin or Norton. Then R Thevenin is equal to R Norton is equal to R equivalent. I think everything became very clear for you right now. What's needed is to apply that on a problem. What I have already told you, I'm going to use it for solving this problem. Please pay your attention. I will solve next class more problems. So for this problem, he is saying find Thevenin and Norton equivalents between A and B. And he gave me this resistor as unknown resistor. This voltage is 8 volts. This resistor is 4. This resistor is 4. This is 8 ohms. He would like to find 7 in and order. How to find 7 in? I would like to find V7 in. Let me remember. Oh, you told us if you would like to, be th to find V7 in, what you have to do, you will remove this guy and you will calculate. Do you remember for V7 in? After removing this guy, I will calculate the open circuit. It will be V7. So what am I going to do for finding V7 in? I will try to redraw this circuit again. 
If you try to redraw this circuit again, I will copy it instead of redrawing it after removing R. This will be my circuit. So if I would like to calculate thickening equivalent between these two points, I will try to find the open circuit. That's very easy. Very easy problem to find the open circuit. What's the open circuit? Actually, the open circuit is equal to this voltage plus or minus this voltage. Am I right? Right? Yes, this voltage is equal to this guy plus or minus this. It depends on the direction of the current. Now, do we have current in 8 ohms? We don't have current, which means the voltage drop across 8 ohms is equal to so the voltage across these two points is equal to the voltage across four ohms only. Right? So you can say if this current is I, I can say the open circuit is equal to four multiplied by I. Now, my problem is how to calculate I. What is the relation between I and this current? They are the same because I have open circuit here. So this current also is I, which means based on that configuration of the circuit, four and four are connected in series. So I can find R total. So I can say based on that R total for this configuration is equal to four plus four, which is equal to eight ohms. Then, based on that, I can say the current I is equal to 8 divided by 8, which is V over R, which is equal to 1 amps. Based on that, I can say V open circuit equals 4 multiplied by 1, which is equal to 4 volts. Any question for the open circuit voltage? Please raise your... Why I multiplied 4 by 1? Because 1 is the current in R. V is equal to I times R. Yes, go ahead. Because there is no current in this guy because of the open circuit. So the current here is equal to zero. That's why I don't have voltage across eight. V is equal to I times R and I don't have I in eight ohms. OK, any other question? Yes, go ahead. Yes, my friend is saying since those two are connected in series, at that time I can say the voltage across this guy is equal to half of eight because they are equal. Yes, or you can use the voltage divider. You can use any method you like. Yes. Yes. later on. So based on that voltage, I can say V7 is equal to V open circuit is equal to 4 volts. What the next step is to calculate I Norton. Who would like to remind me how to calculate I Norton? Benjamin, do you remember how to calculate I Norton? OK, anyone? Yes, I will put a short circuit here to calculate I Norton. So to calculate I Norton, what I have to do, I will draw the circuit again. And 
what am I going to do here? I am going to calculate I short circuit here. My question right now is I have, do I, I have to solve a new problem or I could use anything from this one? Can I use anything from here? The answer is no. Why? Because this is a new problem. You are changing the configuration. So please don't use anything from the previous step. This is a new one. Now, what do you want? You would like to calculate a short circuit. How? Which methods? Excuse me. I can I can use node voltage method by saying summation that can for each node is equal to zero. I have right now this guy is my reference node, then I'll have only this node and it will be very easy to calculate the current in this guy. Or I can use the current divider, but I have to calculate first R total. So my question right now, R total for this circuit, is it equal to R total for this circuit? Should I use R total from the previous circuit? No, please pay your attention to that. This is a new problem. I'm solving it. A new circuit. Don't use R total from here. This is one of the common mistakes. This is a new configuration. Actually here, if you would like to find R total, eight and four are connected in parallel and the overall with four in. So I can say R total here is different than R total before because R total is equal to eight in parallel with four in series with four. If you try to calculate this, it will be equal to six, seven, seven, six point seven ohms. After that, I can calculate the current here, which is I. Should I say this current is the same like this one, which is equal to one? No. Why you are calling it here I? Call it any, any name. This is another problem. Different configuration, I'm solving it. You can give it any name, but there is no relation between this step and the previous one. No relation because I have two different circuits. So I can say based on that, I is equal to 8 over R total, which is equal to 8 over 6.7. So this guy will be equal to 1.19 amps. If this is I Norton, no, it is not I Norton. This is I here, but you would like to find I short circuit, which is I Norton. How to find I short circuit? I have to use the current divider. So using the current divider, I can say that I short circuit is equal to the total current I multiplied by four, divided by four plus eight, because I'm talking about eight and four. So if you try to calculate this guy, it will be equal to 0 0.398 ampere. Based on that, I can say I Norton is equal to 0 0.398 amps. Then what is the next step? You would like to find R7, right? or I Norton. How to find it? I will use the first method. So to calculate or to find R Norton, which is equal to R7, I will use method one, which is R7 is equal to R Norton is equal to V7 over I Norton. So this guy, will be equal to V7 in. I think we have already calculated it. It was equal to uh, V7 in. Is it four or? Yes, it is four. In my notes, I wrote it wrong. I wrote it 1.19. Please fix it in the notes. Or I will fix it later. So this guy is four and I Norton is equal to 0.398. So if you try to calculate this approximately, it's equal to 10 ohms. In my notes, I wrote this different number, but it is four, but you will get 10. 
Now, I would like to repeat solving again R7N by using the second method. Do you still remember the second method? Yes. The second method said what you have to do with this circuit, you have to remove all independent sources. I have only one source and it is voltage source. So removing it means what? Means, mean, means replace it by short circuit. And then inject a voltage here. What is the value of the voltage? Any value and calculate the corresponding current or inject the current and calculate the corresponding voltage. So this is what I'm going to do. Method two. So I will redraw the circuit again. This one. And what am I going to do right now is I am going to erase this guy because I would like to remove it. And I will substitute it by short circuit. And what should I do here? Use a voltage source or a current source. What is the value of the voltage source? What do you like to put? One volt, 10, 100. I think the good idea is to substitute this guy by like 10 to avoid fractions or small numbers, or you can use 100. If you try to use one, it's very, very small. At that time, the current I that you will calculate will be very small. Are you seeing what I'm talking about, guys? I would like to avoid the small numbers for simplicity only, but you can use whatever you want. So can we use 10 or 100? So if I try to use 10 volts, what do I need? I would like to calculate I here. Please pay your attention. Many of you are going to ask me, why did you choose 10? Choose 100. Choose 30. Any value, because at the end you are looking for the ratio between V and I. So what do I need? I need to calculate I. For calculating I, I have to calculate R total. Should I use R equivalent from here or R total from here? No, this is another configuration. So these two are connected in parallel. The overall with it in, I can say R equivalent for this part is equal to four in parallel with four plus eight and the total will be 10 ohms. Now I will say I is equal to 10 volts divided by 10 ohms. This guy will be equal to 1 ampere. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, this is 1 ampere. This is one ampere. Now, my question, how to calculate R7? I got lost. How to calculate R7? Do you remember? Yes, V injected over I calculated. So R7 is equal to R Norton is equal to V injected over I calculated. So this guy will be equal to 10 volt divided by one, which is 10 ohms. Do you remember the value of R7 in that we have already calculated from the previous step? It's 10 ohms. It is the same, right? So I can use either this one or the previous one. It doesn't matter. Last method. And I will repeat that. Last method, method three. Can I use method three for this problem? Method three said you can use it if and only if you don't have dependent sources. Do we have dependent sources? At that time, I can use it. But if I have dependent sources, I couldn't use method three. So what method three said, you will try to redraw your circuit again after removing the voltage source. Removing voltage source means I'm going to substitute it 
by short circuits. And then what what is the next step? What method three said? I will calculate R equivalent here. So R equivalent here is equal to what? Oh, if you try to look at this, these two are connected in parallel. The overall with eight in. So I can say four parallel with four plus eight. I think it will be equal to 10 ohms based on that. R7 is equal to R Norton is equal to 10 ohms. Oh, 10 again. I got the same answer. At the end, what is needed from your side is to draw your 7 in equivalent. R7 in, and this is R that you have already put it away. And this is 7 in equivalent. And this is I Norton. And this is R Norton. And this is R that you have already removed that. So this is Norton equivalent. My question right now, should I use the three methods for solving the problem for finding seven and a Norton equivalent? The answer is no. You can use any methods. Any valid method is OK. So if you ask me to solve such a problem, what I have to do, I will stop here. I will not go to method two or method three. I will not do that. Why? Because this is what you asked me. Or another guy would like to use this, this method instead of dividing V7 over I Norton. You can use whichever you want. Again, 7 is trying to simplify the circuit to be V connected in series with a resistor. Norton is trying to simplify the circuit to be I Norton connected in parallel with the resistance, which is R Norton. How to calculate V7 in? Calculate V open circuit. How to calculate I Norton? Calculate I short circuit. How to find R7 in or R Norton? It is equal to V7 in over I Norton, method one or method two. Remove all independent sources and inject a voltage source and current source or current source and then divide V over I. This will be equal to R7 in or R Norton or use the third method if and only if you don't have dependent sources. Uh, thank you for today's class, but I would like to talk with you before leaving. Uh, so 